Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the January 26 buffs and nerfs. That was yesterday, and I could have done a video on it yesterday, but I wanted to take all day to test things out so that I can give you exactly what was changed instead of just saying that some things did change. I'm going to be going really fast, so please take notes or reference the original information posted by Activision or Treyarch that's down there in the description. You can click the link and follow. The first thing I want to talk about is that the Executioner received a damage buff. It's, it's medium range damage has been increased and it's usable now. I was really mean to the Executioner in my in-depth episode on it and I had a really bad time using it. It's doable now. It's still not an easy gun. It's not simple. It's not spray and pray, but I can actually kill people. It feels like this is a weapon that's worth picking up off the ground, considering the fact that you do still need to use it in close quarters combat situations. The aim down sight delay is also gone. I think that's very cool, especially for this channel, because people on this channel were pretty much the only people in the COD community that knew about the aim, sight, aim down sight delay or transition period time. And I would like to say thank you to Marvel4 over at Den Kearson's forums who discovered this. And because of that, and then I posted a video, and I think a lot of you complained, uh, hopefully in a tactful manner, that was patched. You now instantly snap to perfect accuracy when you aim down sights, and there's no transition period, so that's really cool. There is less idle sway on all assault rifles. Every single assault, assault rifle got an idle sway reduction. Idle sway is when you aim down sights, and uh, the dot or the sight or the ACOG bobs left and right jeff. Yeah, just a little bit, just ever so slightly. All of that has been reduced. Now we're going to be talking about some more specific buffs and nerfs. The M27 got its four-shot kill range increased by 8%. Not a very big one, but just a little bit. And they decreased the amount of headshots required to kill at all ranges, so headshots are more useful with this weapon. The M12-16 shotgun got a slight damage buff. I played around with it. Shotguns are very hard to test. It didn't feel very different, so I'm just going to say it's a slight buff there. I can't really test shotguns without running a bunch of scripts on PC. Skipping over to a bit of live commentary now, this is the FAL with select fire and target finder sight, the one that everybody complains about being overpowered, uh, both the target finder and the select fire. The recoil has been increased significantly on the select fire. It used to not kick anywhere near this much. It's much more vertical now. It'll be somewhat more difficult for people to control. Also, the FAL no longer has a uh, normal hip fire. Hip fire is a little bit worse on the FAL now. It's all about balancing. And speaking of balancing, they decided to buff the light machine guns a little bit. There's a very slight aim down sight time decrease on the light machine guns. Each one's a little different, and because I have some limited frames per second on my console footage, a lot of the light machine guns previously had something like 0.45 seconds or 0.48 seconds, or just a little bit under half a second to aim down sights on the on the on the weapon. Very very slow, even with the quick draw handle. I almost said quick draw grip, grip, grip again because I think of the pistol grip. It has been reduced to something more like 4.1, 4.05, 4.0. It's basically four tenths of a second instead of half a second now. Slight, slight increase makes them a little bit more competitive in close quarters combat. Back to live commentary again with testing. This is me and J-Hub who fact checks these episodes. You can find his channel down there in the description because my memory is still pretty garbage. If you throw an EMP grenade at somebody that has hardwired, they were are 100% immune to it. See that thing it blew up? It just it didn't even affect me. It, it, any you're 100% immune to EMP grenades if you're running hardwired. Some machine guns got a slight nerf or a submachine gun silencer combination got a nerf. The submachine gun with a silencer is now negative 30% range. That means your bullets are going to drop, and I say drop as in not that they fall to the ground, but the damage that they're doing drops and decreases because that's how it works in this game. You have the high initial damage up front, the low damage at long ranges. It's uh, It just shifts the damage curve over by 30%, and you're going to be dealing less damage over range with a silencer. This used to be negative 25%. The submachine guns didn't take as big of a penalty from silencers, and whatever the wizardry over there at Treyarch is, they decided to give it a very minor nerf, a 5% nerf, and nerf it back down to 30%, which is the exact same as assault rifles. So now your SMG silencer combinations aren't quite as deadly as they used to be, but you probably won't quite notice unless you're like a die-hard SMG veteran. The Scar H got a 14% increase in its three-shot kill range, which was crazy long anyway, and now it's got 14% more, so the three-shot kill range is very, very long. Also, the minimum damage has been buffed to 33. It used to be, uh, I think it was 24, so now it's a four-shot kill at any range, one less shot to kill, very, very much so like a light machine gun. Matter of fact, it outperforms some of the light machine guns in this game. Very big uh, buff on the Scar H. It's a much more dangerous weapon, and you're going to be seeing me using it more often often now. The Dragonfire was also updated. It got more health but deals less damage in a way. 
the machine gun that's mounted to the dragon fire shoots somewhat slower so it takes a little bit more skill to kill people and it has a little bit more health so it's a little harder to shoot down because people used to just snipe it once or just shoot it a few times with an assault rifle or pistol it can take a few hits now still not terribly different not my most favorite of kill streaks speaking of kill streaks we have a weaker warthog lodestar and swarm they were all uh, nerfed in various ways not tremendous ones just minor nerfs on all of those the lightning strike now has a longer delay so you can't just instantly pound people people you're gonna have to kind of predict where they're going and aim ahead a little bit the AGR the R2D2 moves around faster I say it's faster because it just cruises around faster on the map but it deals slightly less damage with its machine guns and the death machine is stronger they increased the three shot kill range on the death machine I, I didn't think it was weak anyway but whatever death machine is now more dangerous one of the weapons that received some of the more interesting buffs was the SWAT 556. And yesterday morning, I got up and I was almost going to upload my episode, and then lo and behold, the gun has been patched, so I went and redid a large portion of the SWAT 556 episode. And in that episode, I talk about there being less shots to kill at range, and the patch saying that there are less shots to kill at range, and people are looking at me like I'm crazy now. They're like, what are you talking about? The patch notes say that the bullets to kill at long range is reduced to four. Well, thankfully, I took a screenshot of these things. The original patch patch notes said the SIG 556, which I guess is what they were thinking about when they said SWAT, is that it increased the maximum number of bullets to kill at long distance, and then not long after my video came out, I checked it again, and I noticed that they updated the patch page, and it says maximum amount of bullets to kill is now four. I, I doubt that has to do with my video. Somebody probably just typed it up. It was an extremely long list of things, and something got flubbed up somewhere, but that's how it happened. Back to what's actually going on with the SWAT, however, is that the SWAT's damage is increased. It's now always a four-shot kill instead of being a potential three shot kill so it got a slight damage buff they got a 10% rate of fire increase that's 10% um, overall even factoring in the burst and this was done by making the burst delay smaller you can spam the spam the SWAT 556 just a little bit more the burst delay is not as significant as it used to be and overall this contributes to a 10% rate of fire increase also, interestingly on this, the SWAT wall penetration was increased. It now penetrates through surfaces just like a light machine gun. It got bumped up a caliber, which is pretty cool. The SMR assault rifle got a slight buff. The close range damage was buffed to 55. It used to be 50, now it's 55 like the FAL, so that you can two hit kill with some slight penetrating going through a corner or a thin surface. Also, less headshots to kill over range. I really didn't notice much different difference playing with it, but it's supposed to be a small difference. The MTAR got a three shot kill range increased by 18%. This is one of a handful of fully automatic assault rifles that have a three shot kill range, probably the fastest shooting. It, it's actually one of my favorite assault rifles. I just don't use it very much, but the three-shot kill range was increased by 18%, so the MTAR is now much, much more deadly. Don't underestimate this weapon just because it's the first weapon in the assault rifle class. Very deadly. The Type 25 got some kind of unusual buffs. It now requires less headshots to kill, which I don't find very useful because I don't get very many headshots with the Type 25. However, it was frustrating that even if you got a lot of headshots, it was only going to take one less shot. Now that's fixed, so when you pound people in the head, they die quicker. Also, the hip fire has been improved. That's one thing I did do a lot with the Type 25 is I hip fired it a lot. It got a slight hip fire buff. The box is a little tighter. It's a little bit more effective. I'm about to run out of breath. I believe I've covered most of the important things relating to this, this patch. It was a huge patch. A lot of technical things were fixed. A lot more things were buffed and nerfed than I discussed here, but I tried to hit on all of the biggest points. Overall, I think that this is an excellent patch. If I were going to patch games, this is how I would patch it. We have mostly subtle buffs and nerfs, and the guns that were buffed were very, very underused weapons, and the nerfs were relatively minor, nothing particularly extreme. It felt very good, and I think that's going to make Black Ops 2 an overall better game. I did have a lot of people message me on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and some comments on Reddit, stuff like that. They were kind of thinking, oh great, Treyarch has time to buff and nerf guns, but they can't even fix lag compensation. Terrible. I would fix lag compensation. This game is unplayable. Uh, lag compensation is still a problem to, if you're on the receiving end of it. Thankfully, in this COD game, my connection likes the lag compensation, so I don't suffer as much as I did in Modern Warfare 3, which I was always on the receiving end in Modern Warfare 3. And I will play devil's advocate for the developer here. Lag compensation is a very, very complex problem. It's a huge chunk of net code, and if you start changing things, it can get way, way worse than it is now. And they probably just did not have the resources to overhaul the entire network code for the game and lag compensation and all that. So they're sticking with buffing and nerfing guns. Maybe a lag comp fix will come in the future. I, I don't know, but that's how it is for now.
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out my previous episode, which was a very long review of the SWAT 556, you can click the box on the left, it'll open in a new window. My next episode is going to be putting Tactical Mask to the test to see if it's useful. You can click that box when it's live. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.